Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. And today we're taking a look at a Zealot build. And as you can see, it's a knife build. So let's jump in and see what we're doing. So I do actually have uh, two, say, different... Well, they are different builds, basically, for it. So we'll start off with this one. And I'll go through the talents with you first, then we'll look up uh, the weapon setup and the curios. So, so far this is what we're using. Disdain, 5% damage on your next melee attack for each enemy hit stacks five times. Just a really nice damage boost. And we're coming down here for backstabber, 20% damage on melee backstab hits. Scourge, because we want the crits and we want the bleeds, this is going to be a very, very bleed heavy build. And Enduring Faith, 50% toughness damage reduction on critical hits for four seconds. This is a massively high crit build, so this is going to give you a lot of survivability. And we're going to come down the middle here for Anointed in Blood, just to help out with our ranged weapon. Purge the Unclean for the Unyielding and Infested damage. This is a very big key point for the build, because we want that Unyielding damage. And also the Infested damage really does help out with a lot of the specials. Restoring Face on taking damage, heal 25% of that damage occurs over 5 seconds. Again, this is to help out with just survivability really. Sorry about that, Steam message from UG. And then we're going to be grabbing Immolation Grenade. Now I have tested it with both of these builds. What you can do, if you really really want to, is you can kill these two nodes, well these four nodes, and go this direction with enemies in, enemies out, bleed for the Emperor and the Stun Storm Grenade. It's a perfectly viable way to go. The Stun Storm Grenade does help um, with clutches. So if your team is down, you can Stun Storm and revive. But for pure damage and adding to your toolkit, I prefer going this route. So the Immolation Grenade is what's going to help you clearing hordes so you're going to be slashing like crazy putting bleeds on everything dropping this and this is going to add way more tick damage this is going to really round out your talent tree and your just damage toolkit but going for the stun storm grenade is a perfectly valid option if you want to and that goes for both builds and we're going down this way for the melee damage Movement speed. Movement speed is absolute king with this build. Duelist for 50% weak spot and critical hit damage for 3 seconds upon dodging. You're going to be dodging continuously. And then we're going to take Until Death, Holy Revenant, and these are going to help with survivability as well. And Benediction. I mean, preferably we would want a Beacon of Purity, but we really don't want any of these talents. So we're going with benediction for this and then we're going to be grabbing fury of the faithful i know you're thinking why are we using the charge ability and not shroud field it's because i hate shroud field it's not very good and uh, this is just my this is my personal preference i don't like playing with shroud field fury of the faithful gives you a lot of um, survivability damage and guaranteed crits so you you dash forward replenish 50 percent of your toughness you gain 20% attack speed and your next melee hit gains 25% damage and is a guaranteed critical hit. So it's not quite as much damage as Shroudfield, but it gives you that ability to move and move very quickly and quite a long distance. And of course we're taking the Redoubled Zeal for the double charge. I just massively prefer uh, Fury of the Faithful. I've used this on hard mode and uh, I've actually succeeded on hard mode with both of these builds and I, I just prefer it over Shroudfield. But if you prefer Shroudfield, you can go that way but you are going to have to dump some points out to be able to grab these two nodes and then into this. You're going to lose a few bits out of the build for that. And then we're coming down here. We're grabbing Sustained Assault for the melee damage stacking five times faithful frenzy for the increased melee attack speed and then coming down here for punishment into invocation of death blazing piety 
and Fury Rising. Now, this is the part you can tweak as well if you really want to. You can dump out Faithful Frenzy for Righteous Warrior, which gives you an extra 10% crit, but you lose 10% melee attack speed. I prefer the attack speed over the crit, because with this build we are crit crazy anyway. And I'll show you uh, what we're using. Actually, no, I'm going to show you the other build, because the weapons and stuff are basically the same. So this is the first way of doing it. And then the other build, very similar, as you can see, I've switched over, nothing's changed. It's the exact same pathing up here. Down into Benediction, we're taking Fury of the Faithful. We're losing Punishment, but we are picking up Inoxable Judgment. I prefer this build over the first one. You do lose a bit of damage, but you gain insane amounts of movement. This feels a lot more like playing uh, Carillion Shade, which I absolutely loved in Vermintide. I loved maining the Shade in that. So with this, we're taking uh, Swift Certainty, increases your sprint speed by 10%. In addition, always count as dodging while sprinting, even if your stamina is depleted, which means as long as you're sprinting, you always count as dodging, which mixes up really nicely with wherever that talent was that does something about dodging. And we're going to be taking Pious Cutthroat. Backstabs restore 20% ability cooldown. In Oxford Judgment. So moving grants you momentum stacks 20 times. When you hit an enemy, spend all movement, gaining 1% melee attack. Speed, 1% range attack speed, and 1% damage per stack lasts 8 seconds. Sorry, that point is wrong. That should have gone there. Second wind. So we aren't taking Faithful Fury. That was my mistake there. Sorry, guys. And we're also taking Inebriate's Poise. Gain 3% so three stacks of momentum on a successful dodge. So you could say this is almost um, the way of the Drunken Fist because you are continuously moving, continuously dodging, and backstabbing like crazy. Especially with second win, you're replenishing 15% toughness on a successful dodge, and you are dodging all of the time while sprinting, and you will be sprinting an awful lot. We don't quite have the points to take Retribution Stance, but it's not massively necessary, to be honest. I mean, if you wanted to, you could get rid of Disdain to put it into the attack speed. Totally up to you. There is a few ways you can fiddle with this build. And like I said, if you wanted to, same with the last one, if you wanted to get rid of all of this, you can put it into here. Right, they're the two builds. I'm just going to scroll through them again, just so you can see. So that is the first one. This is the Blazing Piety build. And this is the Inoxual Judgment build. And I'll just scroll through it slowly so you can copy it if you so wish. Right, well, let's have a look at the uh, weapons, shall we? So this is still the Inoxual Judgment build. And this is the combat blade I'm currently using. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's about as close to as I can get. So it's a 379. And I've got 20% infested damage, 5% crit. Uh, that is just how it came, so I left that on it. I had to change the blessings, so I've gone for Mercy Killer and Uncanny Strikes. I do only have the tier 3 of the Uncanny Strikes. I would preferably have the tier 4. So with this, 60% weak spot damage, enemies with bleed, you will be getting bleed stacks on absolutely everything, even on just your normal light attack hits. Most of your hits will be crits. And then Uncanny Strikes is rending on enemy weak spot hits, stacking five times. You're most, uh, mo uh, sorry. You'll mostly be aiming for the head and the back to try and get as many of those backstabs and those weak spot hits as you can. And this build, you will be chewing through bulwarks, crushers, maulers with ease. And for the ranged weapon, there are a few options here, and I'll go through all of them. You can use the um, old school revolver. I've got it with manic and uh, maniac and specialist, with surgical and hand cannon. Again, this is just adding more crit into the build and more rending. And remember, rending basically works out to 1% rending is 1% damage, more or less, these days. Since the big overhaul, that's kind of how rending works. 
But if you're not a fan of the revolver, there are a few other options. Uh, you can go for the heavy las pistol. The las pistols work just as well with this build. The only thing you're losing on this is you don't have as much blow through with your rounds, so you're not going to be killing two or three heavy gunners with one shot because as soon as the projectile stops, it stops. But you will do an awful lot of damage with this weapon. So as you can see, I've got range specialists with Maniacs, and for the blessings, I'm using Dum Dum for close range hits, stacking five times, and Infernus, which is burn stacks on critical hit. And again, you're going to be you'll be stacking up an awful lot of crit with this build. But if the last pistol's not your cup of tea, you can use the brace torso gun. And this is just going to help as a horde clear or to quickly gun down something you can't get close to. And with this, I've gone for Maniac and Carapace Armor with Fire Frenzy and Death Spitter. So you can basically hunker down in front of a horde and absolutely shred through it. But if the Brace Auto Gun's not your cup of tea and you prefer to be a cowboy, you can always go for the Agrippina Quick Draw Stub Revolver. Um, I do really love this. It's I don't find it as useful as the original revolver because you don't have the aim down sights to be able to snipe as well. But if you need to mag dump into something large, this is the, the thing to do it with. And as you can see, it's not exactly perfect either because the perks I would have preferred uh, Maniac and Flak, but I've got Infested and Unarmored. That's just how it rolled. And for Blessings, this is exactly what you'd want, which is Hand Cannon and Surgical which means when you're bracing it and ready to uh, mag dump, you're going to have an awful lot of crit there to play with. And of course, there's the old Shredder Auto Pistol. And this has got Flak Armor, Maniac, Pinning Fire for just incredible amounts of damage and Inspiring Barrage to just farm back a little bit of that toughness. All of these are very, very worth using. I wouldn't so much suggest the shotgun, but any of the pistols, definitely worth looking at. So there you go. And uh, last but not least, the Curios. So as you can see, the only thing that changes on this build between my two loadouts is the ranged weapon. I just swap between them. But for Curios, this is what I'm using. I'm using a max health with toughness, more health and toughness regeneration. One Toughness Curio with Toughness, Health, and Toughness Regeneration. And a second Max Health Curio with Toughness, Max Health, and more Toughness Regeneration. These are just stat sticks to make you incredibly tough. I am not using a wound because you generally don't need it. With the speed of this build, most of the time you will not be getting hit. But if you do get hit, you will be able to farm back a lot of that toughness very, very quickly. And you have enough health here just to uh, basically be able to shrug it off. Of course, if you get cornered by a couple of crushes, you will be mauled. But that's just what happens if you get cornered. But you should have the speed with both of these, even if not going for the Inoxual Judgment build. You are incredibly fast. So uh, this generally, um, Inoxual Judgment is float like a butterfly and Blazing Piety is sting like a bee. So I hope you like the folks, I really do. I've been having a lot of fun with these builds. I've, um, if you've been following the channel, you know for many months I've refused to do a knife build because I was a bit wary of them. But I've started using it and it's the most fun I've had on the Zealot for a very long time. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And uh, if you do, or if you just like the content on the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that little bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And uh, check out the members area. If you fancy it, you can join up to be a member. You get access to the members area Discord, a whole slew of custom-made emojis, and monthly prize draws starting from January. So thanks so much for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. See you later.